Tech TV US Canada brings you news and views from White House and State Department. So I came to thank the law enforcement, the police, they're incredible. And the National Guard has been truly amazing. They all got together, they, they coalesced. The minute they got here, it was over. And I'd like to ask you to say exactly what you told me, because I think it's really very interesting. You can take it off. You take it off and I'll just stay a little further away, right? <laughs> Since this first occurred on uh, Sunday night, we've had resources from all of the state of Wisconsin, and actually members of the federal government have been here really since the first day. Uh, National Guard started coming Monday, and those numbers kept increasing. We've got officers from 40 different agencies throughout Wisconsin, the DNR, the State Patrol, uh, and we made uh, a few phone calls, and on, I believe it was Wednesday, the uh, more, more members of the, of the federal government started arriving, and our numbers kept increasing. And as all of these different members, and our, what we do kept improving every single day. The operation kept improving. And, uh, and truly, I want to thank the President who's standing right here. I want to thank everybody who's part of this operation to help keep Kenosha safer and protect the people and protect the properties. And it's been getting better every single day. And I want to thank everybody. And the whole state of Wisconsin. It's been an incredible coming together of a lot of great people, especially law enforcement and the Guard. Uh, Senator Ron Johnson, maybe you could say something? Well, again, Mr. President, first of all, thank you for coming here, and thank you for your decisiveness. Uh, Congressman Style got here on the ground early, uh, talked to the local leaders, and found out the local leaders wanted help. And so we put a call into you, and I know how accessible you are. You called them back immediately, offered whatever assistance, and that's, that's what really made the difference here as opposed to Portland or, or Seattle. Local officials wanted help, President Trump offered help, and once it all came together, this was over. And we can't, we can't be more appreciative of the, the help you offered and the resolve that you showed, because that, that's the bottom line. Elected officials have to take their responsibility seriously about protecting everybody's constitutional rights, keeping our community safe and secure, Having that kind of resolve and then the manpower that surged in here from around the state, but honestly from around the country, made all the difference in the world. This should be a model on how we can end the rioting throughout, our, throughout America. But again, thank you for your, your resolve you, and your decisiveness. And whether it's Portland, Oregon, we could have that done so quickly, so easily. Your head would spin. It would end immediately. Last night they attacked the mayor's house. It's ridiculous. All they have to do is ask and we'll be there within Literally within minutes, we're set. We're all set to go in. We already have a big force there protecting the courthouse, and it's totally protected. We have 300 people there, Homeland Security. It's totally protected. Uh, Congressman, maybe you could say a few words. You called me originally, and we appreciate it. Please. Yeah, th thank you, Mr. President, for being here. I think today is a great opportunity for Kenosha to really begin to heal and to rebuild the city. Uh, as events began to spiral out of control, I was in constant communication. Uh, with local officials here, and it was very clear Kenosha needed additional resources. And on Tuesday morning, I called the president, and the president answered my call, offered those resources. They were ultimately rejected on that day on Tuesday. We ultimately got them accepted on Wednesday. And when we knew, when individuals knew, criminal elements knew that those resources were going to come here, that's what allowed us to get control here in Kenosha and to end the criminal behavior. We now have public safety. We need to maintain public safety in Kenosha. Now we need to also heal. And today is an opportunity to begin the rallying cry to rebuild Kenosha and make it stronger than ever. Can't thank you enough for being here, Mr. President. And who rejected the call originally? Our governor, Tony Evers, rejected your offer. But ultimately he called, he said okay, and we sent in the group, and they had a lot of great people here to start with, I have to say. Would you like to say something, please? Just a great deal of gratitude for everybody from across the state in law enforcement, the federal government, certainly the Wisconsin National Guard, and I understand from several other states. What transpired here is an attack on America, and it can't happen in any community. The way to stop this is to act decisively while still protecting rights but putting an end to it, and we appreciate the assistance. This ended within an hour. As soon as we announced we were coming and then they saw we were here, this ended immediately. And it should be that way all over. Chicago could use a hand. New York could use a hand. Although I'll tell you, if you let New York's finest and 
Chicago Police Department, they do a great job, but they're not allowed to do their work. A lot of times, you're not allowed to do your work, and uh, they could do it themselves. But you have to be decisive, and you have to be tough, and you have to be strong, and you have to be willing to bring people in. So the federal government, like it was in Wisconsin, the federal government's waiting. We just wait for a call. In Oregon, we have Portland, which is just every night, 93 nights. And every day we call, do you want us? Do you want us? And last night they attacked very viciously the mayor's house. And we were ready to go in just in case if it got any worse. But it was bad. And this man just stands here and says, no, uh, we have a democracy. It's You don't have a democracy when that happens, actually. You have the opposite of a democracy. So I want to thank you all. Thank all of you for being here. But this is in really uh, great shape. And we're looking at a couple of other locations. Now, we can do them all at one time. We're very well equipped. Our uh, National Guard is great, and our military is beyond any military in the world. It's totally restocked and in great shape. We won't have to use military. I don't think we'd have to use military. But uh, we're ready to go with whatever power we need to use. In Washington, D.C., we have a radical liberal mayor. Democrat, and she's, uh, I guess she just doesn't get it. But she's trying to work with the White House and with Secret Service. But it would be so easy to solve that. So we may have to do something there. It'll take approximately 15 minutes. You, you don't see people ripping down statues anymore because I signed essentially a law. I signed a statute that you knock down a statue, you knock down a monument, it's 10 years in prison. And it amazingly stopped. You haven't had any problems since then, Rob, right? So it stopped. So I just want to thank everybody. You have done a fantastic job. Ron, thank you very much. Congressman, great job. Really great job. Thank you all very much. Well, we have the pastor here who's tremendous. He's a tremendous gentleman. I'm going to meet him in a little while. He represents the family. And uh, I think it's probably better off if that's handled locally right now. Uh, it's under investigation, as you know, so I think it's much better. I actually suggested we handle it locally. I was going to speak to the mother yesterday. I hear she's a very fine woman. I was going to speak to her. But then I heard there were a lot of lawyers on the phone. I said, I have a, enough lawyers in my life. I don't need to get involved with that. I spoke with the pastor. The pastor is going to see me in a little while. He is really a terrific guy, if you know him. He's a terrific guy. So I look forward to that. Uh, but we're going to uh, — this is going to heal very quickly. We're going to help them from an economic standpoint, and we're going to make a contribution to your law and to what we call law and order. Some people think those are two terrible words, law and order. And uh, they're not terrible at all. They're beautiful. They have to be used judiciously. They have to be used properly. But. Uh, I wish somebody would have called. When I called the governor, I wish he would have accepted night one instead of night three, because night one, those stores would still be up. But he's better than many. He, he accepted. In all fairness to the governor, he accepted. And when he accepted, it all ended. So I want to thank the governor, and I want to thank everybody. But in particular, I want to thank your police and your great people that from law enforcement. They've done a fantastic job. I want to thank you all. You've done a fantastic job. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you very much. So this store was here 109 years. Just about the oldest in the nation doing what you did. Oldest in the state, for sure. Yeah, it's fantastic. And we're going to help them a lot. I think we're going to help them a lot. Would you like to say something? I just appreciate President Trump coming today. Everybody here does. We're so thankful that we got the federal troops in to help, because once they got here, things did calm down quite a bit. And our city uh, police and sheriff and fire departments are awesome. They worked harder than you can believe, 24-7. That's true. These gentlemen did a fantastic job. Fantastic working, job. Working with the federal government, and it was really uh, great. And once we said, let's go, that was the end of it. Unfortunately, they had a few days when people wouldn't call us. They didn't want to have us come in. 
They just don't want us to come in, and then destruction is done. A day early, we would have saved your store. Absolutely. One day early. One day early. So the governors have to call. The mayors have to call. As soon as they call, the federal government will come in. It'll put it out. Uh, you take the ultimate example is Portland. It's been terrible for a long time, for many decades, actually. I read a story, 50 years, but you take a look what's been happening for the last 94 days. We would put it out within one hour. It would take one hour, maybe less. And that's really what happened here. And it happened in Minneapolis also. Came in, it went for nine days, and we came in. It ended almost from the minute we came in. But these governors don't want to call. The uh, mayors don't want to call. And uh, they have to call and they have to ask. I want to thank uh, Bill Barr is here someplace. Bill, thank you very much. And uh, a man that just got a very strong promotion in a sense. Chad's here. So we're going to have some meetings. We're going to meet with some of the uh, owners. And then we're going to have a round table. I think you're going to be there. But uh, we're going to work with you. We're going to help you. Okay? We'll help you rebuild. It's a great area. It's a great state. This should never happen. A thing like this should never happen. They have to call early. Okay, thank you. I'll see you over there. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you for us.